so hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you welcome back once again to another class of pib 247 my name is vanish mishra and guys in today's class we'll be talking about the pib news from 1st to 2nd of july 2023 i hope the revisions are going fine i hope you guys are enjoying the marathon classes pib ki marathon class hai aaj subah 9 baje just after this class so i hope you guys will be attending that class and of course bahut zyada beneficial hogi aap logo ke liye right the classes the marathon classes are meant for the last minute revision so you guys have to attend it and you guys have to tell all the answers okay and yeah there is an announcement for the enrolled student pib 247 and rb 247 daily pdfs are now being provided theek okay? hai till the phase 1 aur taki aap logo ke paas uh, pile up na ho cheeze so you guys should follow the daily content of pib 247 and rbi 247 in the respective fold theek okay? hai so let's begin with today's class and as usually maine pichli class mein bhi bataya tha that these days the news are too much so today's session will also be quite longer theek okay? hai so let's begin with the class guys and let's talk about the very first question which is about a bill so the union cabinet has approved the introduction of national research foundation bill 2023 in the parliament to establish the national research foundation to establish what to establish the national research foundation okay you need to consider the following statements and identify which of the above given statements are incorrect theek okay? hai so let's talk about the news first and then we will come back to the question all right so news is this only that the union cabinet has approved the introduction of national research foundation bill 2023 in the parliament and of course looking at the majority of the current government it will be definitely passed the bill after approval in the parliament will establish the national research foundation and not only this it will also repeal the science and engineering research board which was established in the year 2008 right it will also repeal serb which was established in the year 2008 and serb will subsume into the national research foundation right the nrs expanded mandate will cover the activities over and above the activities of serb that is science and engineering research board talking more about it so nrf will serve as an apex body and it will provide high level strategic direction of scientific research in the country as envisaged in the new education policy of the year 2020 it will seed it will grow and it will promote research and development across the country and it will inculcate a culture of research and innovation throughout the country's universities colleges and other higher educational institutions the total estimated cost for this will be 50000 crores during the 5 years uh, from this year to uh, the year 2028 and the parent administrative department for this foundation will be the department of science and technology under the ministry of science and technology okay it will be governed by a governing body consisting of eminent researchers and professionals across various disciplines and the governor uh, this governing body right its ex officio president will be the prime minister of the country and the ex officio vice president will be the union minister of science and technology and union minister of education right so there will be two vice presidents one is the union minister of science and technology who is currently dr jitendra singh other is the union minister of education who is currently mr dharmendra pradhan right and it will be led by an executive counseling uh, council its functioning will be led by an executive council that will be chaired by the principal scientific advisor to the government of india so that is all guys about it and now let's come back to the question we need to identify the incorrect statement it will serve as an apex body to provide high level strategic direction as per recommendation of nep yes this is correct it will function under pmo no it will function under ministry of science and technology it will be governed by a governing body whose ex officio president will be union minister of science and technology is that so no minister of science and technology will be the vice president along with minister of education the president will be the ex officio president will be the prime minister this is incorrect its functioning will be led by an executive council chaired by principal scientific advisor this is correct and its total estimated cost is 50000 crores during 5 years that is 2025 to 30 not 2025 to 30 but from this year to 2028 so this is also incorrect 2 3 and 5 guys will be the correct answer option e option e is the correct answer let's talk about question number 2 which is about the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure and we need to again identify the incorrect statement or statements so why it is in news the thing is this because it was announced it was launched in the year 2019 by prime minister 
right right now why it is in news because the union cabinet has approved the ratification of headquarters agreement between the government of india and cbri and its headquarters are in new delhi actually and after international solar alliance it is the second global initiative which is headquartered in the country so cdri ke bare mein baat kare to as the name says coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure the major objective of this organization is to create an infrastructure which is disaster resilient right so to promote resilience of infrastructure systems to climate and disaster risk thereby ensuring sustainable development all right thereby ensuring what sustainable development and to promote of course research and knowledge sharing in the fields of infrastructure risk management standards financing and recovery man- mechanisms it was launched in the year 2019 as i already told you at united nation uh, action united nation climate action summit which took place at new york it is a multi stakeholder global partnership of national governments various national governments are there united nation agencies are there multilateral development banks are there private sector is also a part of it academic and knowledge institution the headquarters are in new delhi and it is being set up uh, with the financial support of rupees 480 crores from india over a period of 5 years that is from 1920 to 2023 24 all right currently there are 39 members consisting of 31 countries six international organization and two private sector organization theek hai ji so that is all about cdri and let's identify the incorrect statement it was launched in 2019 by pm modi at un action climate action summit yes it is the first major global initiative launched by india no it is the second after isa it is not headquartered in geneva but in new delhi india is providing a financial support of 480 crores correct till date it is comprising 39 members 31 countries six international organization and two private sector this is correct so incorrect nikalna hai which means the correct answer will be option c 2 and 3 only let's talk about question number 3 very important question you need to identify the incorrect statement about additional borrowing permissions granted to states for successfully implementing the reforms in power sector so you guys must have heard about this that for implementing power sector reforms the state governments are allowed uh, you know to uh, to borrow additionally from the government of india right that is the whole idea so right now it is a news that because the ministry of finance has allowed the additional borrowing permission to 12 states who have achieved the power sector reforms the 12 states uh, the 12 states have been granted the permission uh, for raising rupees total total rupees 66413 crores additional borrowing and this is based of course on the recommendation of ministry of power for the reforms undertaken in financial year 22 and the previous financial year that is financial year 23 west bengal highest additional borrowing 15263 crores manipur lowest 180 crores now you don't have to remember the name of all the 12 12 states that is not important for us uh rupees 143332 crore is a is available as an incentive to states for undertaking these reforms in this financial year the current financial year and states that didn't mean reform uh, you know that didn't achieve the reform process in the previous two financial years can also benefit from the additional borrowing which is year mark for this financial year that is 23 24 aisa nahi hai ki agar pichle financial year mein achieve nahi kiya to aage mauka nahi milega they will also get a chance all right now talking about the reforms why these reforms are there the objective is uh, you know for improving the operational and economic efficiency within the power sector and to promote a sustained increase in paid electricity consumption it was announced in the budget of 21 22 and what happens under it how much they can additionally borrow the states can additionally borrow so they can additionally borrow up to 0.5% of their gsdp right and this is this will be available till financial year 2024 25 those are 24 25 tak ye available rahega these are the four mandatory reforms theek hai that need to be achieved if any state want to avail the facility number one progressive assumption of responsibility for losses of public sector power distribution companies by the state government transparency in reporting of financial affairs of power sector timely rendition of Uh, financial and energy accounts in timely audit and compliance with legal and regulatory requirements right you need to just read it out 
ठीक है जैसे यहाँ पे की के ऊपर फोकस करो यू नीड टू फोकस ऑन द की वर्ड्स है Let me tell you the keywords. What are the keywords here? Number one keyword is uh, in first reform progressive assumption of responsibility for losses, or you can say losses of power public sector power distribution companies. Transparency is the second keyword. Timely rendition, or you can say timely audit, is the third keyword, and compliance is the fourth keyword. So you need to focus on the keywords in the examination. You can uh, mark the answer. These keywords will be helpful in the examination. Okay. On completion of these reforms, a state performance is evaluated based on various criteria, which are not important for us. And the nodal ministry for assessing the reforms is the Ministry of Power, of course, right? And the, uh, this amount ranges from 0.25% to 0.5% of GDP, GSDP actually, not GDP, GSDP based on the performance of the respective states. All right. So that is all about it, guys. Now let's identify the incorrect statement. Additional borrowing space up to 0.5% of GSDP is available annually for four year period from this to this, correct. This additional financial window is dependent on implementation of mandatory reforms, yes. Ministry of Finance is the nodal ministry for assessing performance, no. I just told you it is the Ministry of Power and not the Ministry of Finance. So this is incorrect which means this will be the correct answer option C. Question number 4, let's talk about it. Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has approved a unique package of innovative schemes for farmers with an outlay of this much crore, 3,70,128.7. Out of this total outlay, DASH has been committed for urea subsidy for how many years? And DASH for market development assistance for promoting organic fertilizers and Govardhan plants. So you need to fill these three gaps. Okay? So let's talk about it. What is the unique package? So the union cabinet, uh, the cabinet committee on economic affairs has approved a special package, a unique package for the farmers worth 3,70,128.7 crores. This will of course enhance the farmer's income. This will bring about uh, the economic betterment of the farmers, right? Out of the total 3,70,128.7 crores, Rupees 3,68,676.7 crores will go for urea subsidy and this will ensure the constant availability of urea to farmers at the previous fixed rate that is rupees 242 per 45 kg of bag, right? This is apart from the recently approved nutrient based subsidy which is 38,000 crore for Kharif C1. Uh, wo alag hai or this urea subsidy is different. Then for market development assistance for promoting organic fertilizers from Govardhan plants, rupees 1451.84 uh, crores, the rest amount out of 3,70,000, 3,68,000 will go to the urea subsidy and this much 1451.84 crore will go to the MDA that is market development assistance scheme. MDA is in the form of rupees 1500 per million ton is provided to support uh, marketing of organic fertilizers. And these are produced as byproducts from biogas plants or compressed biogas plants uh, set up under the umbrella scheme that is the Govardhan. Okay, Govardhan is where coffee news mein hai, so there are high chances that Govardhan se koi question aa Then for the very first time, sulfur coated urea or urea gold has been introduced. This will address the sulfur deficiency of soil and save input cost for the farmers. This is very very important and especially for the Nabad people. Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samruddhi Kendra touches the number of 1 lakh. So now there are 1 lakh Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samruddhi Kendras in the country. And nano urea ecosystem will be strengthened. And the target is that by the financial year 2026, 8 nano urea plants with production capacity of 44 crore bottles, which is equal to 195 lakh million ton of conventional urea will be commissioned, will be established. All right. So that is all guys about it and uh, so out of this much 368 will go to the uh, urea subsidy for a period of 3 years and 1451.84 crores will go to the market development assistance scheme. Option C is the correct answer. Question number 5. Where has the 17th Indian Cooperative Congress been organized under the theme Amrit Kal Prosperity through Cooperation for a Vibrant India? These days, the government is talking much about the cooperatives and that's why this is very, very important. 
तो सेवनटीन इंडियन कोऑपरेटिव कांग्रेस इट वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन न्यू डेली ऑन दिन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ कोऑपरेटिव the objective of this conference was to discuss various trends in the cooperative movement how we can take ahead this cooperative movement how we can strengthen the cooperatives of the country and how we can give assistance to the cooperatives so that they can be strengthened right the discussions around these topics were held the theme was amrit kal prosperity through cooperation for a vibrant india and these two things were launched e-commerce website for cooperative marketing and cooperative extension and advisory service portal all right this much is enough and this much actually is uh, you know enough for you for the examination so it took place in new delhi option e is the correct answer question number 6 and there are 20 questions today so thoda sa dheere banaye rakhe and question number 6 very very important believe me this question guys definitely is going to come in your examination believe me trust me Consider the following statement about National Sickle Cell Anemia Elimination Mission, and you need to identify the incorrect statement. It was announced in the Budget 23-24. I hope you all know this. And it was announced that by the year 2047, we will eliminate the sickle cell anemia from the country. And now it has been officially launched from Madhya Pradesh by the Prime Minister from a place which is known as Shahdol. The name of the place is what Shahdol. The objective of this mission is to eliminate. sickle cell genetic transmission by 2047 and to improve care and prospects of all sickle cell disease patients while reducing the prevalence of the disease jo current patients hai unka khayal rakhna and to stop it from spreading in the community right it focuses on addressing the significant health challenges posed by sickle cell disease particularly among tribal populations of the country it will be implemented in 17 high focus states across the country and these are the 17 states the names are not required because ab agar 17 states ka naam examiner chahta hai ki aap yaad rakho to yaar i think this is very un unfortunate fir to wo chahega ki sab kuch hi yaad kar lo so 17 states ka naam yaad karna i believe it is not possible because wo bahut confusing ho jayega so i think you don't have to remember the name of these 17 states it will be executed in the mission mode as part of the national health mission and the target is that under this mission 7 crore people will be screened over a period of 3 years that is from this financial year to financial year 2026 all right so that is all about it and let's identify the incorrect statement it was introduced in budget 2023 and was launched from tribal district of gadchiroli no it has been launched from shahdol it has been launched from shahdol right it aims to eliminate sickle cell genetic transmission by the year 2030 no it is being executed in a mission mode as part of the national health mission correct it targets screening of approximately 7 crore people in this period the baat sahi hai it will be implemented in 21 high focus states is that so no 17 high focus states so this is incorrect 1 2 and 5 will be the correct answer which is yeah option c again is the correct answer Question number seven. Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has revised the crop residue management guidelines for enabling efficient ex situ management of paddy straw generated in which of the following states or UTs? Very important question again. So crop residue management guidelines have been revised and it will enable the efficient ex situ management of paddy straw which are generated in three states and one UT that is Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and नेशनल कैपिटल रीजन दिल्ली ठीक है फाइनेंशियल तो क्या क्या चेंजेस आए हैं नंबर वन फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस ऑन कैपिटल कॉस्ट ऑफ मशीनरी एंड इक्विपमेंट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट पहले थोड़ा सा शेयर उनको देना पड़ता था देना तो अभी भी पड़ेगा एक्चुअली रिक्वायर्ड वर्किंग कैपिटल में बी फाइनेंस्ड आइदर बाय इंडस्ट्री एंड बेनिफिशरी ज्वाइंटली और थ्रू एग्रीकल्चर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फंड नबार्ड फाइनेंशियल और फाइनेंसिंग फ्रॉम द फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन बेनिफिशरी institutions by the beneficiary financial support distribution kya hai project cost ka wo dekh lete hain so the government will give support at the rate of 75% of the project cost and this 75% includes the contribution from the central government and the state government jo industry hogi that will give 20% and the panchayats will give 10% so it becomes 100% total all right 
it will result in building about 333 biomass collection depots of capacity 4500 million ton in these uh, punjab haryana uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh and it is expected to collect 1.5 million metric tons of surplus paddy straw which would otherwise have been built in fields all right so that is all guys about it and let's identify it so which are the four states and uts punjab delhi himachal uh, not himachal pradesh rajasthan and up i think rajasthan is there or not no punjab delhi uttar pradesh himachal and rajasthan both are not there actually punjab delhi uttar pradesh and haryana haryana is the fourth one so the correct answer will be 1 2 and 5 option a 1 2 and 5 will be the correct answer Question number eight: Which web-based daily performance management system in CBIC, Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, has been launched on the occasion of sixth GST Day, first of July? First of July is GST Day, होता है, CA Day होता है, and I think Doctors Day भी होता है, ठीक है? चलो जी. So the sixth GST Day was celebrated in New Delhi with vision GST Act six, सरली क्रत कर समग्र विकास, right? The initiative launched is the प्रतिदिन right pratidin is nothing but a web based daily performance management system which has been launched in cbic and what will it do it will import it will monitor the important task at the field level for better monitoring of work at the field level as well as to further motivate officers to perform their functions effectively and 50000 taxpayers were honored uh, cbic has honored the contribution of 50000 compliant taxpayer representing all industry sectors theek hai ji so this much is enough from gst day the correct answer is pratidin option b pratidin means daily pratidin mean in english means daily and now guys let's talk about the questions in short but before that if you want to have the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description and we have launched a past year papers book of the rbi grade b with detailed solution itna acha solution hai ki maza aa jayega right and फेज वन एंड फेज टू दोनों के क्वेश्चन है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड टेन टू टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू अवेल दिस बुक यू कैन गो टू द एमेजॉन और यू कैन बाइट फ्रॉम द वेबसाइट अनु जिंदल डॉट इन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन कैबिनेट कमेटी ऑन इकोनॉमिक अफेयर हैज अप्रूव द हाइएस्ट एवर एफ आर पी ऑफ डैश फॉर अ बेसिक रिकवरी रेट ऑफ टेन पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंट फॉर शुगर के फॉर शुगर सीजन दिस टू ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी Uh, sugar season of uh, 22 23 it is also higher by dash over production cost you need to fill the gap so it is 315 per quintal and it is 3.28% higher and it is also higher by 100.6% over production cost so the correct answer will be option e question number 10 where is ministry of new and renewable energy headed by mr r k singh organizing the international conference on green hydrogen with the aim to explore mechanisms to establish a green hydrogen ecosystem right it was organized in new delhi option e is the correct answer and it was organized by the ministry in partnership with these three organizations ministry of petroleum and natural gas csir and office of principal scientific advisor to the government of india option e is the correct answer which technological platform has been launched by ministry of commerce and industry for logistic related industry associations to post their issues or pain points for early resolution this technological platform is e logs option d is the correct answer option d guys is the correct answer question number 12 by which your government has set a target to achieve 1 trillion dollar of merchandise export under ftp 2023 very important question the target here is 2030 pm modi has chaired the meeting of 42nd edition of pragati which is the ict based multimodal platform for proactive governance and timely implementation involving center and state government till now that is june 2023 dash projects 270 actually uh, Uh, not 270 340 projects having total cost of 17.05 lakh crores have been reviewed so the correct answer will be option d which country has been recently dropped from united nations general assembly security council children and armed conflict report of the secretary general this country in question is india 
right option d is the correct answer question number 15 where is ministry of social justice and empowerment headed by dr virendra kumar organizing the sixth edition of divya kala mela to enable the divyang artisans or artists and entrepreneurs to showcase their products and skills so this was the sixth edition the first edition took place in new delhi the sixth one took place in jaipur option a is the correct answer how many critical minerals have been identified in the recently released first ever report of the country on critical minerals for india prepared by the ministry of mines so how many critical minerals 30 option c correct answer and not always the correct answer is 75 okay this time it is 30 in the month of may 2023 union government has received dash of total receipts at the same time the total expenditure incurred by the union government was dash so it is uh, 4 lakh something and is 6 lakh something i am forgetting the number yeah option e is the correct answer 4 lakh 15691 is the total receipt and 6 lakh 25978 is the total expenditure Question number eighteen again a very important question. Where is Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways developing a national maritime heritage complex under the Sagar Mala program? ये बहुत पहले announce हुआ था. It is being developed in Lothal, which is in Gujarat. Option B is the correct answer, which is a Asian Harappa Valley site. I hope you all know this. Question number nineteen. Union Health Minister Dr. Mansukh Mandavia recently virtually reviewed the preparedness of states for prevention and control of which. vector borne diseases ahead of the monsoon season these are the diseases which you know jo ki phailti hai hamare environment mein uh, barish ke baad monsoon season mein so these are malaria kala azar japanese encephalitis and chikungunya and not lymphatic filariasis so 1 3 4 and 5 will be the correct answer option b and the last question for today but not the least with which country has india post entered into an agreement to introduce international trade package service between the two countries to facilitate e-commerce export which country is this the country in question is canada option a is the correct answer okay guys so that is all for today i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section and i will see you in the next class on friday till then keep studying and keep studying hard keep revising and keep revising hard goodbye take care and god bless